We're going to begin this intro to neuroscience with a local view of what is happening at the level of neurons. These are a lot of fun to model, but we're going to need some simple model to get us started. So to begin, let's think in terms of the activity of individual neurons. This is a very cool and well-studied field. What you tend to have with individual neurons is electrochemical activity that most of the time is quiet, and then you'll get this burst, this spiking behavior that can often be somewhat periodic, but then can often get a little bit weird. Hmm, I wonder what kinds of tools we have at our disposal to describe such phenomena. The first model we're going to look at is a simple model, a classic model, a model by Fitzhugh and Nagumo. This is a continuous time model in 2D. Wow, this is going to be so easy because it's just 2D, right? What are the variables? The variables are V, which is going to be a voltage. This is going to be your, your excitatory variable, right? The, the thing that's spiky. But then there's another variable, W, that is something like a recovery or a recharge variable. Without getting into the electrochemical physiology too much, let's just jump into the model. The model is as follows. The time derivative of V and W are given by the following. dV dt is V minus one-third V cubed minus W plus I, and then dW dt is alpha V minus beta W where alpha and beta are parameters, and I, again, is another parameter that has to do with a, a sort of an applied voltage, uh, something like that. Okay, now let's take a look at this. We have a linear term for W. For the derivative of V, we've got that cubic nonlinearity that is coupled to the W system, but then has this dial on it at the end, that I parameter, that we can change. Now, this is just one version of Fitzhugh Nagumo. If you look in the literature, you're going to see lots of different ways to write this. You're going to see that cubic nonlinearity replaced by a more general cubic polynomial. There are lots of different ways that you can do this, lots of different parameters that you can use, but that I always tends to be there. Okay, so that's the Fitzhugh Nagumo model, but what happens with it? Well, you know what to do, right? This is a two-dimensional continuous time system. Why is this even in volume three? Well, we can follow the story. We can find equilibria. And the fact is, depending on these parameters, I, alpha, beta, you always have between one and three equilibria. That's it. Those are your choices. That's nice. And you could solve for where those are. <laughs> Have fun doing that. Uh, what comes next? Oh, of course, bifurcations. Because if we change the number of equilibria, we've definitely got some bifurcations going on. Here's the facts. Within this system, there are saddle node bifurcations. There are hop bifurcations, in particular, subcritical. Very interesting. There are Bogdanov Dawkins bifurcations. You remember that guy? And, well, maybe there's a little bit more as well. So, of course, we should take a look, simulate this, change some parameters, see what happens. If you start off with all your parameters set to zero, then that cubic curve in the V equation is just a curve of equilibria. Some stable, some unstable, and you just quickly rush there. If you slowly turn up some of the dials on alpha and beta, then you start moving slowly along that cubic curve and then more rapidly when you're away from it. And what you see as you start to turn the dials on both the alpha and beta terms and the voltage terms is that you can get things that look like limit cycles where you're, you're getting fed into moving along one way and then slowly climbing up this cubic and then zipping back the other way and slowly climbing down that cubic. And depending on the values of the parameters, you can deform this limit cycle. You can change its shape and move it around, control it to do what you want. Now, there's a lot going on in this system. 
And depending on what you are doing with those parameter values, again, you can have between one and three equilibria. It's pretty clear that depending on these parameters, you can go from, say, a single sink or a single source to having a saddle and then a pair of sinks or spiral sinks or sources, or spiral sources or all kinds of interesting stuff that can happen. Now, this is a three parameter system. That means your parameter space is three dimensional and it's kind of difficult to explore. If you just start turning dials at random, sometimes you'll get limit cycles or what appear to be limit cycles. Sometimes you will get things that it doesn't look like there's a limit cycle. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. Part of this has to do with the fact that there are different types of hop bifurcations in there, including subcritical. That means you can have some unstable limit cycles. Very tricky to work with. Now, it's a lot of fun to spin the dials, play with the parameters on this, but you see some things that you recognize and you ask yourself the question, is that it? Is that all there is? I've got some equilibria. I've got some limit cycles. Ooh, hmm. Um, things are a little bit more complicated. It is a fact that within this Fitzhugh Nagumo system, there are also SNPs, saddle nodes of periodic orbits, where you have stable and unstable limit cycles that collide and collapse and then disappear. You also have a number of homoclinic bifurcations going on. Remember those guys? Now, here's the thing. Both of these are happening at very fine scales. I mean, very fine scales. Scales where even up to numerical resolution of a simulation, you, you just can't see it happening. It's happening so fast. Nevertheless, we can prove that that kind of stuff is in there. There are also some weird bifurcations, co-dimension three bifurcations. We haven't ever seen any examples of those before. There's all this stuff in this Fitzhugh Nagumo model. And I got news for you. This is the simple model of what is happening inside an individual neuron. And it's not even all that accurate. Ooh, what an interesting story. We have to tell.